Hi there, my name's Fiona and I'm one of the team here at PTFS Europe. And what's on my mind today is sharing data between Koha library users. Now, we're all very aware of the sterling efforts of the Koha community and there's a lot of resource sharing that goes on. But today, I wondered if you'd heard about MANA. Now, MANA has been around for some time and it is a... It is an open source knowledge based platform which is dedicated to library data. And within Koha, you can enable MANA knowledge base to be searchable via your own Koha instance. So, just want to show you where that lives and what use it can have for you. Um, first of all, if we go into the Koha administration area. Then into our system preferences and scroll down to our web services, we'll see this area here for, um, for the MANA knowledge base. Now, the key system preference is the one that's simply called MANA, and that's where you either switch on or not you, whether or not you're using the MANA knowledge base. And as with everything Koha related is reciprocal, so you can import other people's um, data into your uh, Koha instance, but in, in return, you can also export your own data and share your subscriptions and so on. You can have your own unique MANA security token, and you can get that from the MANA Knowledge Base Administration page. So if I just open that in a new tab, this you'll see here is available from the, within the administration page itself. And this is the token area down at the bottom. Now, one thing that you can do um, with your serials module is you can specify whether or not you want all your subscriptions that you create to be automatically shared with MANA. Um, so if that is checked here, then your prediction, your sorry, your subscriptions will automatically share. So you can use MANA in two areas within Koha, um, within the serials module and within the reporting tools. So let's return to our homepage and come in to look at the serials module. Over on the left hand side, we've got a menu option called search on MANA. And as its name suggests, this allows you to simply search the knowledge base to see if there is a subscription that matches somewhere within that knowledge base. So let me just do a quick title search for Indian. You can see that so we get the results from MANA, but to the library staff, it's presented in Koha. So they're not having to go out and search another, um, another source. It's all done within Koha. And here you can see a list of matches. So for example, we've got this um, Indian Journal of Finance with its ISSN, tells you the publisher details. It's a monthly publication and it uses a volume and an issue number. So at this point, all you can see is that actually it's just displaying some information. So how then does it tie in with your um, serials and your subscriptions? Let's demonstrate that. So I'm going to search the catalog for a title that I've got um, in the collection called The Piano Magazine. When I click on this, you can see it's a very basic record, but it does have a title and it does have an ISSN. Okay, so I'm now going to create a new subscription for this um, title, and therefore it's pulled the title information over into my subscription record for me. Obviously, if I was doing this for real, I would populate some of these fields, but for now, I'm just going to move on to my next page, and this is where you see where the magic happens. So it's told me here that it's found a subscription on the, man, on the MANA knowledge base. And I've got a link to show the, those MANA results. And I highlighted to you before that my catalogue record has an ISSN and the title. So between these two options, this is where, where the match has been found. So this tells me that the MANA subscription says that the Piano Magazine has a frequency of 
and it's published one every three months, and it uses a volume and two numbering subdivisions. So if this is the same as the one that I'm working with, then that's great. I don't actually need to, to create my own subscription. I can just import that and it puts the information into my subscription record for me. I can obviously make any changes that I wish and I can start my own numbering sequence from here. Um, <clears throat> obviously, there is the option for you to send your subscriptions back and that's controlled by the system preference that we looked at a little while ago. Now, the other area where you can use MANA is within the reporting interface. So let's have a look at that. Well, first of all, if we have a look at our saved reports, we're all familiar with them looking at the list of saved reports and seeing the different folders. And obviously, we've got the run option at the right hand side, allowing us to quickly run a report. But if we have a look at the options available from within the actions menu, one of these is share. And when we use the share option, this then is sharing our report with the MANA knowledge base. So this is where it's asking us to enter a report name and put a note in before saving. So it's allowing you to contribute your, your sterling hard work back to a wider knowledge base that can then be imported for use by other um, libraries. Works in a similar way to the SQL reports library available in the Koha uh, wiki. This is just another method for sharing that data. And lastly, we have the option to create a new report, um, as well as the standard new guided report and new SQL report. We can create a new report again from the MANA knowledge base. So here we can have a look um, at that what we've got available. So let's just do a search for, um, see what reports there are to do with transits on the system. So that's not great. That's maybe too, um, I've only got one hit. So that's maybe a little bit too specific a search. If I take my S off and have a look at just what's available for transit, you can see I get a far um, greater results list. Obviously, as with everything else in Koha, I can search for being um, more specific. But let's have a look at this one. Gives transit history for a barcode. Um, yeah, that looks like it might do the job. I then click import. And what it does for me is it puts the SQL of that report into my Koha system. If I want to make any changes to it, I have got the edit option. I can obviously delete it if, I, if, I do, if it isn't what I'm looking for. But it's going to select various um, column data for me and selecting all of this from the transfers table. And it's going to ask me to input a barcode. So yeah, I think that looks okay. It does what it says. So let's run that report. And as I would expect, it asks me to input a barcode. So just see if it works. Run the report. Yep, yeah, and it does. And obviously um, I can I can use that as a saved report. Um, I can make more changes to it. I can do whatever I want to do um, with it because it is just using it in our reports interface now. So I hope you find that useful. Just a few little um, extra um, time saving opportunities, I suppose, if you're if you have users of the serials module and obviously you can collaborate with other libraries and reports. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye bye.